Good morning, everyone. It's really, really early in the morning. Hope you're all doing really well. I'm going to do a data recovery on an iPhone 6S that was sent here from another data recovery company. I've started this one early, early in the morning because this one is going to need ultrasonic cleaned. And after ultrasonic cleaning anything with an A9 CPU, it's time for some really, really intense drying because if you've got moisture under the A9 CPU and you heat this thing up with a hot air gun, the RAM tends to bulge up and like crumble into bits. It's really, it's a really, really gnarly thing. So let me show you why it is I'm going to ultrasonic clean this one. Look at this iPhone 6S. This thing has seen more action than Dirk Diggler. Now this customer, I will say, was completely open and honest about the prior rework attempt. Uh, hmm, so we've got some stuff missing up here. We have a lot of carnage going on right here. Holy smokes. Look at this logic board. <laughs> you know what you do whenever you have trouble with these things starting up? You just want to kind of sprinkle solder balls everywhere. Surely that was an accident, right? <laughs> Okay, so like many prior rework attempts, this one, eh, well, I was going to say this one is not giving me a good feeling, but this down here kind of gives us like a, a no-brainer type situation where we've got this conductive sticker that's been pushed down here up against these caps. I have gotten lucky on these before where they just looked hopeless and wound up being something just as simple as pulling back a piece of metal off of ground like that. I mean, that does happen. I don't have a real good feeling about this one. This one looks really, really bad. So let's just kind of, let's just peel this copper sticker back away from these components. There we are. And let's just peruse this thing, shall we? Anybody want to place any bets as to what the actual problem was. I can see that it was liquid damage. You know, we've got some corrosion down here around NAND. And I wonder why they cut the shield back right here. They've got the, ugh, I don't like seeing that. They've got the shield cut all back. Here is what I don't like seeing. I don't like seeing the bubbling in the solder around the PMIC. How about the one if I, what in the heck? Look here, we got like, this is a little straggler. We'll probably want to get that out of there like right now and not later. So I don't forget that it's there. Let's just go ahead and pull that out of there. And also, so it doesn't wind up floating around in my ultrasonic cleaner. What is that, a backlight diode? We can live without you if I accidentally break it. All right, so we got that little straggler out of there. And, uh, huh, I wonder what is actually wrong with this one. You know what I see? What do I see? What in the heck? What is this? Oh, this isn't an iPhone 6S. This is a 6S Plus. All right. Well, everybody, let's just, let's, let's just all absorb how bad this board looks right now, okay? This thing looks disgusting. It has been thoroughly wanked down here. And uh, I don't have a good feeling about this one. These prior repair attempts, they do not give me a good feeling. Now, one thing that I, I do feel positive about, I feel positive that everything that we have going on down here is not good. But I just, I cannot in good conscience with the way this thing looks, you know, solder all ran everywhere, solder balls up here. I just cannot in good conscience try to power this thing on. I'm going to have to clean it. Okay, so the, the baseband shield has not been removed. The CPU shield has been removed. And under and around the CPU, see so we have a cracked inductor here. I believe that's for backlight. We're not giving a crap about backlight. I don't see much to be worried about. We got one little ball here. We don't have any squeezage back here along the backside. This thing may just be recoverable if, if it's not an Error 78 phone. 
do all that work to get them up and running and then they're toast. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this up before we try to figure out what all is going on. This is looking really bad. And you know, it was liquid damage to start with. So I don't know that this has been ultrasonic cleaned like ever. So my next step for this thing is going to be ultrasonic cleaning. After that, I'm gonna put it on a dryer and then uh, I'm gonna get myself cleaned up for the day. Mmm. All right, we've got this thing cleaned up. Now my next step is gonna to be to put this on a dryer. I'm gonna set it to a temperature that's like just below boiling point and I'm gonna slowly let this thing start to dry. And what we're trying to do is make sure that all of the moisture and every bit of drop of everything that has been absorbed into any of the ICs has been dried. If we don't do that, like if I just move in and I start doing rework on this thing, then what's gonna happen is that the RAM on this A9 CPU is gonna begin to bulge like a volcano and it erupts. It just, it breaks apart into nothingness and it's, it's a really, really nasty wound. So let's try not to destroy this one. Before I move this off to the dryer, let us have a look under the microscope at our nastiness down here and you will see in a real short period of time what my ultrasonic cleaner did to this. This is an ultrasonic cleaner that I spent 60 bucks on eBay. I mean, this is the very first cleaner that I ever bought. And I use a, um, a mixture of Branson EC and distilled water. And look what this cheap ultrasonic cleaner does to these boards. I'm like, I'm, I'm tickled shitless every time I use this thing. So now this board has uh, still so okay. Hmm. Okay. Now you can all laugh. Everybody laugh at Jason's cheap ultrasonic cleaner. It left this garbage behind. All right, time to throw it out of here and get get rid of it. Okay. So still a little manual cleanup to do here. You know, just everybody ignore this. I'll probably just edit this out. That way, everybody will think that my ultrasonic cleaner is perfect. That's what I'm gonna do. Hey, at least it's coming off in like big clumps, right? Oh, and that one shot off into nothingness. Now I don't know where it's at. I'll have to find that. All right, so this thing did in fact do a pretty dang good job of cleaning this up. I noticed that we've got like a corrosion castle or something going on between these, right? Hmm. All right, well, the next step is to let this thing dry really good. And right now I've got to tell you, I'm pleased with what I see uh, because it looks like there are some things that we might be able to just fix and get this thing back up and running, but I'm, I'm really not sure yet until we try. So I am going to get myself ready for the day. I started this early in the morning so that it would have plenty of dry time. And to start out with, I'm just going to put this board on here like this. I dry boards in all kinds of crazy ways, but it seems like I always wind up putting them on a hot plate. Uh, so we'll turn this on and make sure it's not set up above boiling temp. And then I'm gonna sit this thing like way back in the back here, out of my way. And we're gonna let this thing bake for, oh, I don't know, a, a few hours, half the day. Uh, I have been known to leave them on there like all day long, then put them in the sun and then put them back on the hot plate. You just you got to make sure these things are dry, man. You, it, humidity is enough. Like you, you can't even have any humidity. All right, so I've had this set on 200 C for a while. I know it's not really 200 C because I couldn't leave my hands laying like this on 200 C. Uh, this is something like just below boiling point. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to raise the temperature up just a little bit, but not quite above boiling point. We don't want any steaming going on underneath the ram. Ah, that's better. Man, I feel better. All right, so this thing, it has been sitting here sort of steaming. Well, not really steaming, but uh, baking at, oh, probably just under maybe right around boiling point. And I am ever so paranoid about a bulging CPU. So let's just, I'm going to raise the temperature up just a little bit more. We're just kind of slowly trying to evaporate the water away.
All right, we are back with this thing. It has been sitting here drying for several hours and I'm ready to start poking around on it and see what we can figure out. So here's what it looks like in all of its, mm, all of its marvelous glory. Let's take it off of my dryer and I've got this thing worked up to 220C and I can tell you it feels damn hot, but it's not 220C. And I'm happy to see that we have a nice flat A9 CPU without any bubbles or anything on it. So here we are under the microscope looking at our A9 CPU and it is just marvelously flat. No domes on top. We have a nice flat CPU. Without wasting any more time, let's look and see what was messed with on here before it was sent in. We know that this was liquid damage, but we don't know exactly... Dear God, man, what? What? It looks like there's something down in there next to that coil, right? Am I wrong? Is there something down in the crack of the crevice there? Hopefully we can leave Chestnut alone on this one. All right, so it looks like we've got a bunch of missing stuff here, right? I'm betting we've got some missing I2C stuff, right? I'll tell you what, it looks like there's a blob of garbage there that my cleaner might not have gotten rid of. Let's go ahead and mop that up, shall we? I know, I know, make fun of my $60 cleaner. I will use it until it is dead. Jeez, what is that stuff? Whatever it is, I'm like crunching it off the board. I sort of don't blame the cleaner for not cleaning that up. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll get lucky and like, this is the only thing wrong with this one too, right? No, I won't get lucky. I, I will not get lucky twice in a row on this deal. No freaking way. Let's have a look at flex board view. I'm gonna zoom in after we rotate the board to the same orientation that we have here. And what do we have here, fellers? We have some thingies, right? Oh, listen to me. Listen to me trying to be confident. I know better. This one is not going to be successful. This has bad news written all over it, right? So having a look at flex board view here, we just want to look and see what all is missing from this board, shall we? Now on our board, we are missing things here as well as across here. One of these things here this is going to be a missing, uh, this is going to be for Stockholm. That is R5413. Just to the right of that, on the bottom side, we are missing R0806. This is an I2C line for the front camera. This one here is also an I2C line for the front camera. We're not concerned about anything going to the front camera. This is data. Now here we have also three other components. One, two, three. The first two are capacitors, a, a cap on PP1V8 LD06, and then we've got a six volt capacitor for LCM boost. This is the, uh, this six volt cap here, R or C4009. This is for image power, but then the next one to the right, we have I2C0 underscore AP underscore SCL, and we're on the other side, we've got PP1V8. So this is once again, a pull-up resistor for I2C0. Now let's click a PDF here. And what that's gonna do for us is it's automatically gonna take me to the spot on the schematic where this resistor is. So here is R0900. Isn't this the same exact resistor that was in my last iPhone 6S video where I whined about not getting an I2C problem and that's all I got to do. That is all I got to do. I got to get on YouTube and say, oh, I never get any I2C problems. Me, 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 me. And they rain from the sky onto my bench and spew out money everywhere. I'm just kidding. I'm flat broke. So looking at the schematic, we can see that that is a 2K resistor. 2.2K, blah, 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 blah. Don't I have a bunch of these in stock? I'm like tired of pulling these off of donor boards. What? Oh, what do we got here, fellas? 2.2K 1005s? Yeah, yeah, let's use new components today on this. My level of excitement is increasing for this phone because I'm finding things that are repairable. So without getting too excited though, let's just see what else is going on here. Do we have any obvious shorts? Uh, there's some solder ballsy stuff going in down there along chestnut on the outside of it, right? Is there anything on flexboard view that's going to ruin my day? 
on the right side of that IC at this orientation. So let's just kind of zoom out here and look at the, um, the board view. Yeah, you know, on the right side of there, we've got some VCC main, we've got some ground. Let's not worry about that too much. Let's leave that exactly like it is. I tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to power this thing on. Anybody else with me? Let's power it up. So here we go. We've got the power supply on the screen. Now, if this is only an I2C problem, we're going to get 70 or 80 milliamps, dead. 70 or 80 milliamps, dead. 70 or 80 milliamps, dead. So let's hook the power supply up. And we'll turn the supply on cautiously. We are getting 10 milliamps of current. That is splendid. All right, I'm going to push the button to boot in one, two, three. Boot. 70 milliamps. Dead. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 70 milliamps. Dead. 70. Dead. The I2C gods have shined upon me. It looks to me like we got another phone with an I2C problem. Let's lay our hands on it, shall we? Uh, <laughs> All right, I'm going to put a tiny bit of flux here. This is the tip of the sharpest, to sharpest toothpicks that money can buy that I'm using to apply this flux. I'm going to use some 6337 leaded solder. And we're just going to go ahead and tin up these here pads. We're not going to be worried about the front camera Z stuff there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and leave these other two caps here alone. For now, let's just get what we need on here for um, the data line. So we're going to use one of our brand spanking new resistors. This is a 2K resistor, fresh off the strip here. And we're going to want to try to make this sit in here with the black side up. Now, because I am still freakishly paranoid of moisture being between the RAM and the CPU, I'm going to solder this down here with an iron. Oh, who am I kidding? This thing is a long time dried. Still makes me paranoid though. All right, let's do uh, let's do this just a little bit better. I'm gonna add just a little bit more flux. There we go. And then I'm going to use a, like sort of a larger blob of solder here. It's probably okay. Eh. You know what? It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but I think I'm pretty well certain that it's going to make connection. Now, before I get too much more irresponsible, let us look at this blob of solder here. Look at this. We've got a huge blob of solder next to this cap here. And if we switch back over and we look at the board view, we can see that this side of that cap is ground and this side of it is PP5B7 LCM AVDDH. We can also see that if this phone powers up, it has no shred of hope at getting image because it's got the chestnut 5v7 output soldered smack dab onto ground and it will not work we're gonna need a bigger iron all right i'm gonna turn on my 2027 here Shit. i'm gonna use my 2027 here and let's see if we can remove this wonky bridge i'm gonna need a lot more flux than that aren't i let's get us a big old big old Lewis Rossman helping a flux on here. And then let's bump it with the iron. And may the chestnut gods be with me and prevent me from having to pull chestnut on this phone. 
All right, so I've sort of made a little bit of a mess here. I'm going to be trying to get this cap to sit back down on the board. Around there. It's getting pretty close, right? I got a better idea. Let's just remove that cap. There we go. Let's just get rid of that steaming pile of hog manure. And let's just go ahead and tend these pads up here a smidgen. Huh. It looks like it's time for me to clean out my tip cleaner. Well, it's easy to tell which ones are ground. All right, well, let's go ahead and leave that alone just like it is. Before I attempt to power this on again, really, really needing to have a look at some of these other components because we've got some other stuff missing up here. Uh, let's see, we're missing our chestnut CP cap here. This thing is gone. There's another one right next to it. Um, PP5B7 LCM Mason AVDDN. That one is gone. Uh, so we are missing some things here that uh, pertain to image and touch. And I do not think the chestnut supply will work properly with all of these big old caps missing. So I'm not expecting to get good image. But uh, are we missing any more I2C related stuff? Uh, we confirmed that these were just for front camera. Stockholm, Stockholm, Stockholm. I tell you what, here is, this is I2C0 clock line. Where is I2C0 data line? Where is this created? We can find that just by zooming in on Chestnut. So here is SCL, here is SDA. So let's see where that one leads us, shall we? Ah, here we go, right next to Chestnut, just above Chestnut is the pull-up resistor for that. That is R0901. And it is also a 2K resistor. And looking at the microscope, we can see that that resistor has seen better days, right? Yeah, that thing looks like hell. All right, looks like hell, but it's probably still okay. Let's go ahead and check to see if we get normal diode mode readings on these lines, shall we? So I've got the meter set to diode mode. I'm gonna put my red probe on ground. And then I'm going to put my black probe on I2C0 data line right here. 1.2, that's not a good reading. Maybe I'm just not getting a good connection. That's more like it. A 0.34, so that's what we get on that one. And then down here on this one, what do we get here? I don't remember which side is which. I'll just check both sides. We get a 0.38 on that side, right? 0.38, yes, 0.38 on that side. And then on this side, we get a 0.27. These are what I would consider to be pretty acceptable numbers. We don't have anything really high. We don't have anything really low. Now we're going to try to turn it on. Let's get the data. All right, I've got a USB cable lined up. I'm ready for data transfer here. I've got me an iPhone 6S housing ready. I've got me an iPhone 7 battery ready. I've got me an iPhone 6S screen handy. All right, so first off, we're gonna do this on DC power because I would really like to see every step of the way what is happening. Crap. I've got me an iPhone 6S Plus screen handy. So first we're gonna be doing this on DC power because I wanna see every step of the way of the boot process here, exactly what happens. So we'll hook up the power supply. And I'm gonna prompt it to boot in one, two, three, boot. 90 milliamps, 200. I don't expect to get an image, but I do expect to get something that makes me feel like it's booting. 200, 90, oh, come on. 100, come on. 200, show me 300, come on, show me, yes! This thing is booting! 
but we still have no image, right? No image? No image, isn't that lovely? So we have no image, so we really can't say for sure that this thing's booting, right? In fact, it seems to have kind of ran a little flat here, hanging around at 170 milliamps. Can we see some activity, please? Maybe it's just booting really slow. Yeah, all right. Well, I'll tell you one thing that is not, and it is not 80 milliamps and looping, so that's a good sign. 160. I would just like to see any hint of activity, like brain waves, you know, drawing more power, drawing less power. Come on. 180, so we got a little more. 250. We are going to be in good shape here. Let's fix image. So I'm going to turn the power supply off. Let's see if we can get some image on this thing. Tell you what, let's start right out here at the connector. We know that chestnut is messed up. I mean, that's pretty well a given. But we also know that everything that we see there around chestnut, you know, it is water corrosion, but it's also technician damage. So we're gonna run up the side of the display connector here. The first pin that we wanna check is PP1V8 LCM Con. We're gonna be checking that in diode mode. So with our red probe on ground and our black probe to do the probing, we'll check PP1V8 LCM Con. It's a 0.21, that's acceptable. Let's go ahead and check the lines below it. We get a 0.22 on what line is that? On one of our AVD lines, that seems a little low, a 0.22 on this chestnut AVD line. Let's check that in resistance mode. I might, I might just be a little nuts, but let's check it anyways. So in resistance mode, I'll do my black probe on ground and then I'll use my red probe to do the probing. And it was not our fourth one, but the next one down, right? Uh, 200K, we're not too much worried about 200K. So back over to diode mode. So we know PP1V8 LCM Con was okay. Um, let's just go ahead and check these other ones. 0 0.27, 2.3, that's on one of our reverse bias lines. So if we reverse our probes and check that line again, rather than 2.3, we'll get more of a, a reasonable reading. A 0 0.58, we'll accept that. Uh, I don't see anything too terribly crazy here. There's a lot of other things that we can check. Just for giggles and shits, let's check the backlight lines here. Hmm. No, nothing too terribly out of whack at all. What is terribly out of whack is the way that this area of the board right here looks. This looks like hell. What if I tip it up? Can we get and look under that chestnut I see? Is it as crooked on the board as it looks? No, I can't really say it's crooked on the board. Let's go ahead and check our uh, power enable and our reset signals. They're on the other side of the connector. So with the red probe on ground and the black probe, doing the probing, we're gonna just check up the right-hand side of the connector. The first line is a clock line. And we got our next line. And then the third one up here, this is chestnut power enable, that's looking good. And then we've got LCM reset, the fourth one up. Also looking good. This is gonna be something funky going on with the driver here. So let's just have a look at this driver area again. We are missing tons of components. We are missing this 5v7 cap. We are missing this 1v1 SDRAM cap, which I don't know if that's gonna hurt us or not. We might need to get this back in here. We are also missing a, a 6v0 LCM boost cap. We're missing, up here, we're missing our chestnut CP cap, our CNCP cap. I've heard it called chestnuts nut. So there are things here that could be preventing chestnut from doing anything, right? We know that this cap here has to do with the chestnut power supply. We also know that this cap here, as well as this missing cap, and then these caps here, which looks like they look like complete total hell. It looks to me like this guy was having trouble getting this thing to get an image. 
Uh, gosh, we are going to want to go ahead. <laughs> we are going to want to go ahead and take chestnut off the board because if these components look this bad, I bet you that this guy was trying to keep from pulling chestnut off the board. And the actual problem causing this thing to not get an image is most likely going to be right there under chestnut. So I'm going to go ahead and remove chestnut from the board here. I'm just going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to grab it with tweezers and sort of pick it up off the table and let the whole board fall out from under it. There we go. I bet we got a missing 5v7 pad. Boy, something doesn't look good under there. Let's, uh, I'm not, okay. I don't see what I thought that I would see. I thought I would see a missing 5v7 pad. But holy smokes, look at the carnage. It looks like it's got like, Good God, man. It looks like it has carbon under it, right? I mean, this looks like... Oh, man, this looks like crap. I'm excited. I think we're going to get the data off of this one. I like when I start running into things that I'm familiar with. Uh, you know, there's a lot of times doing these repairs where you just, you're just you starting out and it's like you've already had a half a dozen of them that start like this that don't end well. Um, this is not one of those. I'm, I'm starting to run into things that make me feel confident that we're going to get the data because we've got carnage under the display power management IC. We have a technician that has been screwing with all things display power. And I removed the chestnut IC, our display power, uh, or our display power supply, and I start running into things that um, he missed, which means we are very likely going to get this to a point where we can get the data today. All right, let's get this thing cleaned up so we can see what's actually going on here. Hey, I actually, uh, we managed to revive some of these pads. Sweet. Processor's still nice and flat. <laughs> Don't ask me why I'm paranoid about that. All right, so let's get, uh, we know we're going to need some more cabbage in here, although they may not be entirely necessary. I'm going to sort of do this anyways. So let's get some flux going. I know I should have did this before I cleaned it. Whatever. That'll do it. A little more flux. Ooh, baby. All right. Now, let's see if we can find us a brand spanking new chestnut I see. That's a little too liquid damaged. You know, if I can find me another 6S Plus, that'll be really handy, right? Ooh, there's a 6S Plus. Severely liquid damaged. Ooh. Nope, that's just a 6 Plus. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, I'm lowering my standards, and now I will settle for anything that still has chestnut on the board. Hmm. This 6 Plus still has chestnut. Let's use that one.
There we go. Let's go ahead and get some new balls on it. I used to be more responsible and kept a whole bunch of these in stock, but then I just... Oh, Lord. But then I stopped... Uh... Yeah, I just don't, I hardly ever, ever, ever have to use a chestnut IC because I just don't hardly get this type of thing anymore. I get the iPhone 7s that won't boot and other screwy stuff that is major time pits that doesn't often end in success. This is going to end in success though. Dun, 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 dun. All right, let's grab us a balling stencil here. Let's use an iPhone 6 something or other. There we are. Let's get us a little blob of soda. Solder. A blob of so solder. Let's say it is, is, is the best I can. I will say solder. There we go. Let's smooth out our solder. And let's start warming this baby up, shall we? I think I'm about 10 minutes away from getting the data. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, baby. Let's have a good look at its balls. Hmm. That one looks pretty well, uh, these balls look pretty symmetrical and centered. I probably don't need to do my rewarming thing, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways. There we go. Now let's make sure that we can see its dot. Oh yeah, nice, pretty, distinguishable dot. And there we have us a chestnut IC. That is beautiful. Here we go. So here we've got our customer's board. I'm going to sit this chestnut I see right here, right about where we need it. And then what do I have here in the way of brand spanking new caps? 6.3 volts, 2.2 microfarad. What is the value of these caps? Shall we look and see? Because we're missing some here that I feel like we should have. Okay, so we're missing this one here. It is a 5V7 cap. C4004, that is a 10 microfarad, 10 volt cap. And what else were we missing here? We are missing our chestnuts nut cap right here. That is also a 10 microfarad, 10 volt cap. So that's kind of easy. Um, the one right next to it, that is a 5V7 cap. And there is just nothing left of that pad. Let's plan on leaving that one out. And then right here, we're missing the 6V0 boost cap. Uh, what? size is that one. This is C4007. And if we have a look at the schematic, C4007 is also a 10 volt, 10 microfarad cap. Thank you, Apple, for making this easy. Thank you. All right. So for these donor components, I'm going to turn to an iPhone 7 board. So here's our donor board. Oh, look, this one had chestnut on it and I could have just got all the whole, like I could have gotten the whole mess right here. So we're going to grab this cap here and this cap here at the very least. And let's see, while we're at it, can we at least snag one more 10 volt, 10 microfarad cap from somewhere? Okay, so just on the other side, we can grab one on the other side there. Those are overfilled, but that's gonna be okay. So let's go ahead, we're just gonna grab all the caps that we need right now. I'm gonna begin warming this up with hot air. There's one. Two. Mm. 
Whoop, almost blew it away. And three, there we go. So now we have three 10 volt, 10 microfarad caps. So going back to the customer's board, there is our fresh chestnut IC. Let's have one more look at FlexBoard View to get the orientation. So pin one on this chestnut IC is gonna be facing my bottom right, our bottom right. We're gonna take the little dot, and you can see one side of that corner of that chip has that little dot. We're gonna place that this direction here on the board. Let's add a tiny bit more flux. So, shit, I blew it away. The first thing that goes down here is going to be chestnut. Here we go. That's chestnut on the board. Let's start putting these caps down. I am thankful that they're all the same value. One. Two. Boy, I had to get that one really hot. I think it's still got some lead free on one side. That's okay. We don't need this to survive drops. We just need it to survive a single data transfer. All right, so looking back at the board view here, just to sort of verify where we're at, the next cap that I am planning on putting in is C4004. That is another one of these 5V7 caps. And let's do it. So we'll grab our one remaining donor cap. And we're going to slap that sucker right there. There we go. All right, so we have fixed chestnut. We've put some caps back on the board. We fixed a dead I2C line. Let's see if we can get the data. So here we are. I got a housing lined up and ready. I've got a battery lined up and ready. Let's get this thing hooked up to a screen and power supply and see if we can start getting an image. I think we're getting ready to be successful. Let's turn the power supply on. 10 amps, that's a good sign. We're gonna press the button to boot, and one, two, three, boot. 90 milliamps. Apple logo, yes. Oh, yes. All right, we wanna see this thing boot up. We want to see that it has working touch. And then I'm going to go for data. Holding 300 milliamps on the supply. Did this mofo lock up at the Apple logo? No, 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 no. We'll just keep waiting. How about that? Steady drawing 340 milliamps. Oh, we're starting to see some activity. Half an amp, 600 milliamps. I'm just glad it's not sitting here dead. Ooh, that's pretty significant current. 1.1 amps there, I seen. Any minute, fellers. Oh, yes. All right, lock screen. We have touch. Touch, yes. Ooh, baby. Let's go ahead and turn the power supply off. And, uh, hmm, that housing's not going to do me any good, is it? Hmm, well, apparently, I don't have a 6S Plus housing handy. So let's grab us a dock flex. Let's go for the data. I'm going to fold the screen back. Disconnect the DC supply. Let's get us a dock flex hooked up. Nope. 
battery hooked up. And now we will prompt this to boot via USB. There we go. Let's see if we get an Apple logo. Yay, Apple logo. Apple logo. All right. While this thing sits here and takes its sweet time to boot, I'm going to get iTunes opened up. Come on, baby. Now we know it took forever to boot. Uh-huh. I knew it was too good to be true. Oh, for the love of all things holy. This thing is locking up whenever you put in the last digit of the passcode. Okay, I have not ran into this on the iPhone 6S yet, but I have ran into this frequently on the iPhone 10 where they get separation between the board halves. And if any of the NXP lines are hosing the near field communication chip, you wind up in this situation where the phone locks up when entering the last digit of the passcode. Could it be the same thing on the iPhone 6S? Remember, we do have like all kinds of carnage on the bottom of the board. Let's have a look. And it's back to the passcode screen again. So, okay, let's disconnect our dock flex, disconnect the battery, and let's have a look at this board again. We need to be concerned about, uh, oh gosh, all things Stockholm, right? How many things could be wrong here that would cause this NXP, our near field communication stuff, to be hosed? How many things could be causing this? A lot, right? Let's just get in here and, and consider some things. One thing that I do have going for me is that laying right next to me, I have another iPhone 6S Plus board. So if I look at this same area of the board, I can compare really quickly. I can tell that this component down here, this was originally a no stuff, so that's not supposed to be there. Um, we've got this thing here that was sort of in the line of fire of all this liquid. Down in there, we've got two components. We still have two components. We determined that these two resistors that are missing are for the front camera. And then what was this one back here? So we've got these two resistors, <laughs> these two resistors missing and then one back here. So yeah, this is some sort of a stock homey thing. We've got two front camera resistors here. And then right here, R5314RF, this is labeled up for Stockholm, and you can see that these things are going right here to this NXP chip. This might actually be what it is. Let's see what that is on the schematic. So R5314, that is in a position right here. It says that it is a zero ohm resistor, so we can pretty well just replace that with a wire. That's what I'm going to do. Honestly, I think it's more likely to be liquid having gotten under the NXPIC itself. Uh, we've got this component down here missing, but that sure looks to me like it's gonna be a capacitor. Yeah, C2113, that is a capacitor on a 3V0 Mesa line. What about uh, this coil here? Stockholm, BAL0, TX2. Okay, so this looks like a very mission critical coil for the purpose of Stockholm working properly. What does ours look like on our board? Eh, it looks like total crap, but it doesn't look like it's disconnected, right? I'll just check it for continuity real quick. Couldn't hurt. For this, we'll just go ahead and use diode mode. We should pretty well get a 0.00, .00 across it. So I'll put uh, one probe on one side of it and put one probe on the other side of it. We're getting a zero, zero. So that thing, you know, it could be melted internally, but it's definitely not blown. So, hmm. Do you think it is? I mean, do you think it is this resistor right here missing? Let's just throw it on there. It is on my donor boards. It looks, it looks like it's important. Let's get a little more flux on there. I thought I put flux on this board 500 times today. All right, let's install us a nice zero ohm resistor. There we go. That looks like it's about zero ohms, right? It don't have to be exactly zero ohms. You know, we just need to get it kind of close. And I'd say that's pretty close to zero ohms. 
There we go. All right, well, without skipping a beat, let's get it hooked right back up and ready for data transfer. Although I don't think we're gonna get data transfer this time around, but that is an obviously missing component that does something. Hooray for our dock flex. A little battery action. And now we pray to the near field communication gods that this phone will let us install a passcode and recover the data for somebody all the way to New Zealand. How about that, right? All right, this phone should be booting while I'm over here gloating and, and blowing off air from my lungs. Any moment. All right, last digit. Oh, it is working now. Huh, now it's gonna let me enter the passcode. That is actually it. Holy smokes. It's actually working. It was a freaking resistor. Holy crap. All right, well, in that case, I've got an incorrect passcode, which, oh, that's because I, I, didn't, I didn't put in the passcode. I put in the job number. So it'll freeze on the last digit of the passcode, regardless if the passcode is correct or not. So let's enter the correct passcode. Here we go, last digit. That is the incorrect passcode. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, here we go. I am on, I, I think, my third passcode. I'm hoping this one works. All right, here we go. Last digit. Yes! We've got it unlocked. Now it's time for iTunes, baby. Let's get a backup on this phone right away. All right, we're going to say continue on iTunes. We're going to say trust on the phone. All right, we've said trust to iTunes. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. You're not going to reboot. You're not going to mess up. You're going to give my customer the backup they deserve, right? No, no, you're not. <laughs> this backup is encrypted. Okay, well, here's what we're going to do in this case. I'm going to go ahead and smack the backup now button. And I'm going to go ahead and let this thing grab an encrypted backup. You know, it looks like we've got a 120 gig phone that is like 60% of the way full. So here is what I'm going to do on this one. They had a really hard time coming up with the passcode. I think this is like maybe the third passcode that actually worked. So I don't have a lot of faith that they're going to know what the encryption passcode is. So after I get this encrypted backup, I'm going to proceed like I have no backup whatsoever. And the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and transfer the entire camera roll off of this phone, just in case they don't know what this encryption passcode is. And um, that's, that's pretty well it, guys. I am going to go ahead and call an end of this video. I'm not going to cover any of the software process because we're already at an hour long. And, you know, I started on this phone at around 6 o'clock this morning, and it's about 5.30 in the evening. So... Guys, I really thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. If you, if you like the video, please click the thumbs up button. If you're new here and you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe because YouTube's telling me not enough people are subscribing. And um, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.